Richard, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, my friend. So we Who should, are you? I am Paul Ford. I am the president and co-founder of Aboard, Aboard.com, an amazing tool for organizing all the world's data, including your own. I am Rich Ziotti, the other co-founder of Aboard and CEO of Aboard. Chief Executive Officer. And this is the Aboard Podcast. Welcome. Happy New Year. Happy 2024, even though we're only five days in. Let's play a theme song. All right, Rich, let's just get into it. Nobody needs to hear about our holidays. We should tell people, though, we're in an office. We moved. We did. There might be a little echo. We're in a, it's kind of cavernous and weird in here. It's exciting to be in a different place and to go to work and to put pants on. This is extremely fluorescent, is what I would say. It's extremely fluorescent. I love an office. I love it. I love a water fountain. Mm-hmm. I, I like a coffee machine. It just makes me feel like I'm... It actually really helps me work, so I'm glad to be here. I'm pretty convinced that Kind Bars would never sell if they weren't laying around offices. Oh, there is no context where that comes home. Yeah. No, because think about what would you take home and eat? You would take home something a little more protein, a little chewier. They have those other ones. I forget what they're called. It just tastes like concrete. No, office food is basically compressed sawdust and coffee. It's not supposed to be enjoyable. That's why we're here. So anyway, look. What is the theme going to be this year for the tech industry, for the world? Well, for the world, it, let, let's, let's cover the world in another podcast. In the past, I've talked about how technology, new technology, like disruptive technology, sort of goes through an overreach phase where it's sort of clumsy and not ready, mm-hmm. fails, and then comes roaring back and gets implemented well. I mean, this actually became, the Pets.com dog hand puppet became emblematic. Real video Mm -hmm. and real player predates YouTube. Probably predates the birth of some of our listeners. But yeah, these were, were, you've probably seen the Pets.com dog because it became emblematic of the dot-com crash in the 2000s. That's right. It was this little dog. It's like, I'm going to deliver your pet food. And then... It crashed and everybody's like, huh, thank God that's over. Nobody's going to get pet food in the mail. The Apple Newton and the Trio. There mm-hmm. was something called the Trio, which was a big screen with a stylus and a keyboard at the bottom. So everybody gets excited. They see the new paradigm. The new paradigm is they're going to bring pet food to your house. You're going to use a handheld computer instead of a big computer. Yeah. You know, and, and everybody is like, all right, cool. I'll give it a go. And then it doesn't quite line up. doesn't work the way that everybody was hoping. That's right. You know, there's another one that's it's shocking how it came roaring back was like the on-demand delivery in the early 2000s. Oh, Cosmo.com. Cosmo and there was others. There were others. Web like, van. Web van. They all folded fast. And then years later, now DoorDash, if you order lunch, they're like, hey, listen, I can stop by the hardware store. I can get oh, you yeah. what you need. So the on-demand economy of like just a few taps of your phone came roaring back. Now, you know what you nailed there, though, is see how they're all connected? You needed the enabling technology of the smartphone to really get the on-demand economy to get There's moving. There's pieces that have to come together. And the smartphone right. wasn't quite ready until the iPhone, like the Trio and the Newton. Like, they were too clunky. They didn't really... And you needed the internet and mobile internet to really line up. Exactly. So, so what you see is everybody can see the future pretty well, actually. Yeah. But the pieces and the infrastructure don't work in such a way that a typical human being picks it up and goes, ah, oh, you know what? I'm in the mood for Indian food right now. They're just not ready yet, right? Yes. And and Real Player, it was great tech. They had tons of engineers thinking about compression because the internet wasn't fast enough. I mean, Adobe was the first real video platform after that, right? And then YouTube kind of came and took it all. That's but, right. But what did YouTube do? It created the really simple web portal where you could watch flash videos and then eventually they're like, actually, we'll just do our own kind of video here. We'll do a regular web video and off we go. And so where are we today? We are in the sort of hangover after the lurching forward of AI. That's right. First of all, let's talk about the grisly bleeding elephant in the room because people are still recovering from crypto. 
I don't see, I bet no one's going to say the word crypto between now and like July. I, I think that's right. Yeah. I think that's like talking about World War One. I. I mean, I, we got to go check out Andreessen Horowitz's website and see if those white papers are like still up. They, they might redirect you. <laughs> yeah. To the, to, AI, a, to the AI portfolio. To the AI portfolio and the AI initiative and the AI fund that they're going to. Yeah. That's just, that's life. That's a, that's, it's, that's, it's all good. Well, no, I think it is. But that, that goes to a thing that you were just talking about, right? Which is. These very important, very wealthy people publish white papers defining an incredible new paradigm. This time it's different. Get in line because it is coming and it's happening. And what you notice is that when it doesn't hit for them, the consequences are very low. They just publish a new white paper. It's very low. And look, their game, the game they play, is a 5% hit rate game. They're not supposed to hit home run after home run. That's not how it works. Innovation happens in a very grisly scorched earth sort of way that's just how it goes we have lived through two unbelievable paradigm shifts in the way that humans communicate one is the internet itself coming on the heels of like the phone system which i mean it's been 50 70 years before you'd seen anything quite that dramatic and then the second is the miniaturization of technology leading to mobile and mobile is really what made it from like a hundred million people kind of nerdy everybody. to the entire population of the earth in time, right? Yes. So, you know, they're saying, here comes another one. Here comes another one. And it's always overreaching and a bit awkward yeah. because it's a lot of tech. Tech that is really disruptive can feel very threatening. Like it can feel like, oh, we're coming for your children with this one. This is going to change everything. Well, And they get very invested in that narrative. Crypto is perfect here because it was like, we're coming for money. Yeah, like fiat currency. And everybody's like, oh my God, I have money. And and look, I, I think part of it is enthusiasm. And part of it is, look, people don't often talk about, and we talk about it a lot because we were in that business. When tech lands with something disruptive, there's an optimism and an enthusiasm around it. But then on the other side of it, there's this sort of secondary economy that kicks in around the anxiety and nervousness around it. And that's consulting firms, technologies to help you defend what you currently have rather than get disrupted. There's all kinds of other, this sort of shadow growth kicks in. Well, where did we live? We lived in this very particular place, which was we were quite soothing. But we, we essentially we tried to be like good surgeons who were like, it's a, it's a pretty bad mass, but it's gonna, we're going to get it out of there. Yeah, and a lot of times people would come and say, should I worry about this? They, they, we had a lot of meetings where people clearly weren't going to hire us, but they wanted to know if they should worry about something. They would also come to us with millions of dollars in sunk costs and say, did I make a mistake? And yes. often we had to say, yeah, kind of, sorry. Correct, yep. correct. So where are we now? If you drew the story arc out, it has been... Well, let's characterize where things are, right? So I think you have the GPTs of the world, the chatbots, the image... You have content generation. And then you have a kind of like deep analysis, machine learning, and predictive model. Sort of back to the world of statistics plus lots of machine learning. Yes. Where you're saying things like, I think we should dig an oil well there. They've been doing that for a long time. Or yes. Uh, or, or more sort of confusing and nefarious, that guy, I looked at his picture, he looks like a criminal. Right. That's, that's a bad one when the robot does that. Right, right, right. So there's a lot of data analysis and there's a lot of content generation. And those seem to be the two areas that have caught everybody's eye. The most specific one being um, the company OpenAI, which had a lot of drama at the end of the year. Sam Altman, the CEO, got pushed out then pulled back in, uh, which has two amazing products. Has a lot of products, but like Chat GPT, where you can literally kind of ask it to do anything and it often will do pretty well. Like, you know, write me a research report or make me a list. I think that's the that's that's the machine learning's been around a long time. AI in various incarnations has been around a long time. A lot mm. of scientists, a lot of big thinkers are trying to been trying to crack it. I think the thing that open AI stumbled onto, I don't think they knew that it was gonna explode the way it did, was like Ah, and I think Altman might get credit for this because I think he, he likes to sort of throw a bomb in the room yeah. and see what happens. I think they put this thing out and it just it resonated in a, in, a, in a very massive way because it was just consumer grade. He's a real product person. He pushed it over the wall. I got to give him credit, too. He's a little bit of he's very Silicon Valley. I go up and down on him. But just today he tweeted out like we need to show concern for our Muslim colleagues as well. He's a Jewish person. That. Like yeah, he's yeah, yeah. he actually is trying to be 
a leader in the moment as a thoughtful technologist, yeah. which is hard to do. It's not an industry that lends itself to that. So That's right. Shout out to Sam Altman. I hope he's okay. Doing good. God bless. Yeah. Great guy. So this thing comes out. And it's sort of an enthusiastic intern, and and it'll it'll push it'll answer it'll never say I don't know. ChatGPT. We didn't also mention Dolly, which like Mid Journey is like the image generator. But yes, yeah, so Chat, there's a bunch of image generators. Focused startups. on ChatGPT. They focus on ChatGPT, and what you have is you know this thing that came out, and it's like holy moly, can you tell me about? I have a friend. Let me show you the, an extreme example of how this thing can be helpful. Okay. His architecture firm does mostly construction in Africa in different countries. Right. And he doesn't know the regulations of each country versus another country in Africa. Of course. And so he's like, write me out a proposal for a construction project for a strip mall in this town in this African country. And make sure you think about the local regulations and guidelines. And look, I'm sure he has to check the work. He definitely has to check the work. But he fell out of his chair. It's the classic intern. When something does 30%, 40% of the work, even if it's bad, you're started. You can see a lot more. Yes. I don't think people understand that. Like, I've been using these tools a ton. We've been figuring out ways to integrate them into our product. Like, They're great. They're actually great. They're novel. They have a lot of problems. They can be problematic. They can. There's a list of reasons that they are dangerous and bad and evil. But they can also help you make a proposal for a shopping mall in an African country where you're not spending a lot of time most of the time. Windows can't do that. Neither can Google, Yeah. by the way. Yeah. Neither can Google. And, no. and a lot of the steps got eliminated. I, he could search Google, open up some PDFs, read some articles, and cobble it together. Because, by the way, these AI engines... That's what they're doing. They're they're taking information that's on the internet. The way I think about them actually is so because you know what you know what's funny is the these models aren't that big. They're in gigabytes. They could fit on thumb drives. Right. What they do is they go read the whole internet and they compress it. It's like a zip right. file. When you're doing this, you're actually saying, Hey, go find me the zip file, the like twenty K file that's all about African regulations for shopping malls. Right. And go ahead and unzip it. And it's like a JPEG. It's really lossy. It keeps going. But it's like a really crappy JPEG that's been glitched, like, you know, glitch compressed like 500 times. You can still see the picture of the little boy with the lollipop. Yes. Right? That's what you got. Like, think about it as like an incredibly crappy image that's been, un that's like too, too compressed, but you can still see what the picture is. And I think what's interesting about this is there's another killer feature that came out of the box here that I don't think anyone expected. It's the idea of throwing errors has kind of been tossed aside and has been replaced with infinite confidence. To interface with something that is unabashedly confident and enthusiastic and kind of yappy yeah. is bizarre to humans. Humans can't believe this thing is kind of giving it a go. I, I love that about it. It's not good or healthy. It's not necessarily good for society. <laughs> I've actually, this is, I'm, I'm writing about that right now. Like it's shamelessness is very appealing to me after decades of apologetic products. Do you know what it is? What? It's sales. It is. It's like a really yappy salesperson. Oh, and it'll it'll do anything to keep the conversation going. But it's actually just kind of like it continually is uncompressing all of the human knowledge it's squeezed into seven gigabytes. Right? Yeah. So now, okay, hold on. So so we know that this is out there. It is a big deal. It's a bigger deal to me than crypto from a pure computing point of view. Like I under, I get that crypto was a hu had a huge economic impact and it had these sort of interesting math, but it never emerged as a really interesting technology for me. It was it was a very interesting concept. I mean the the practical use side of it never took. Well, cuz to me technology is about making tools cheaper and more accessible. Of course. Okay, so this makes it really cheap and easy to do it. And, and and actually ChatGPT, there's another one called Mixtral, M I X T R A L, which is as good as ChatGPT 3.5 and it's like a 7 gig download and you can run it in your terminal. That's crazy. Right? So like or or 15 gig or whatever, but it's not big and 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 so like this world is getting cheap, it is getting accessible. It will it you know, GPT can ChatGPT tends to time out after, you know, like it'll give you 10 list items and then you kind of got to beg it to give you more sometimes. Yeah. But it's going to be on your phone, it's going to be on your computer and you're going to oh, say yeah. do a thousand of that for me. Work all night for me.
All right, Paul, we talked about anxiety earlier. I love anxiety. Yeah, me, me too. It's, it's really something that's helped my life. Let's role play. Okay. Please put on this nun's no. uniform. No. no. No, just kidding. No. <clears throat> I'll be the CEO. Okay. I'm calling you in. Okay. Hi, how you doing? What am I? Uh, Paul, walk with me. Okay, but what's my job? The black bar's I? downstairs. No, no, but you have to tell me who I am. You're the CIO. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. Uh, Paul, listen, I, I, I'm concerned about something. Okay, should we put some on the calendar? Say that. Uh, okay, should we put some? Okay, Jeff, should we put something on the calendar? No, no, walk with me. All Car's right. downstairs. All right. Hold on. Let Are me you free now? I, I guess, uh, what choice do I have? You're the CEO. All right, meet me, in the, meet, by, meet me by the elevator in three minutes. Okay, three minutes. Okay, now we should, honestly, if this was true, like, podcast verite, we would have a three-minute silent pause. We're not going to wait. No, but it would be amazing. It would be pretty amazing. (laughs) It would be pretty good. I'd be really happy to be, to suddenly bring that into the marketing podcast for our startup. We're now in the lobby. Okay. By the elevator on the 29th floor. Oh, hey, Carl. How you doing? Hey, Paul. Hey. No, no, you're Jeff. I was just waving at Carl. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, You asked me to role play. I'm going to take this seriously. Take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Um, Listen. What's my name? Stan. Do I like coffee? You love coffee. Nah, I'm Stan. I like coffee. Not only do you love coffee, you grind it in the office. Oh, yeah. yeah I have a Chemex guy. like, by my desk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right, Jeff, go ahead. I'm Stan. Tell me what you... What do you know about AI? Stan, what's going on here? About AI? I mean... Well, what business are we in, Jeff? You have to uh, tell me as CEO. We are in a... We. I am the CEO of a retail franchise called Bath, Bed, and Beyond. Wow. Bath beyond the bed. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm, I'm, okay, great. Yeah. Okay, here we are. Listen, I, I just I was just reading up, and our competitors they've got sales assistants popping up right there in the app. They and do, Jeff. They not, do. And everybody's saying, you know, AI is changing how people engage with customers. And I also heard, and I don't know this for sure, but there's intel out there that the uh, supply chain bits are getting optimized by AI across town at the competitors. What the hell? What, what's your plan here, Jeff? Jeff, I got great news. No, I'm sorry. What's your plan here, Stan? Stan. Yeah, Jeff, I got great news. Uh, I've been working on this. Stem- Push one, please, on the elevator. We're, I'm leaving. Okay. Okay. Building. Here we go. Um, <laughs> uh, at this point, someone walks into the elevator, and it becomes really uncomfortable. Yeah. But anyway. anyway. Um, okay, so... Obviously, I'm a good CIO, so I've been staying up abreast of this like by reading CIO Magazine and having my team report to me with decks, yep. but I, too, am a little bit overwhelmed. Now, I'm not going to tell Jeff that. Here's what I'm going to tell Jeff. I'm going to say, A, we're on it. B, it's real. People are using it. C, I got to tell you, we're a bigger company than most. And I really have been taking both. We've been doing a couple little pilot projects, experimenting Mm -hmm. with chatbots and so on. I got to tell you, the risks are real here. And everybody, all these really early adopters, they're smaller than us and they're going to get bit. Did you see what happened with that Chrysler dealership the other day? No. What happened? Um, Somebody convinced the bot to sell them a car for a dollar. And then they put it on social media and made a huge joke out of it. Oh, boy. Because all they're doing, all these people are doing, I got to tell you, here's the good news. Everyone is simply stealing and white labeling and wrapping the programming interfaces from the big players. Nobody uh, in our space is able to go and run their own sort of AI methodology just yet because it's, it, it requires million dollar employees and it requires two million dollars to run and create one of these distinctive models. Stan, they're doing exciting things across town. Do I need to be worried? Yes. All right. Here's what I need from you. And this is the Jeff CEO move. We're going to put some on the calendar 10 days from now. I need to see a plan. And I need to see a budget. Great. And St- scene. Now, let's be clear. And like- scene. Usually, Stan would run and call McKinsey. Yes. But they're drunk. They also. <laughs> they're get, recovering guys, from the, yeah. You want to really take advantage of this incredibly wise podcast? They don't know anything either. No. <laughs> Well, the reality is, if you want to get value out of McKinsey related to all of this, yeah, they don't know anything. It's true. Go and uh, just ask them to pitch you a AI-related project. They'll send like 10 people to work incredibly hard. And then right as you're about to sign the contract to keep going, develop like a problem with your wrist and say, let's, let's pick this up in a few weeks. Yeah, it, is, it is a wild time right now because there's anxiety. Mm-hmm. There's 
no real rule book yet. There is no playbook. Back to the earlier part, Richard, which is like the the infrastructure isn't there, right? Like it's it's not in your phone. The chat interface is kind of bulky. There's like, a lot up in the air. Yeah. There's a lot up there, in the there's air. There's lots of users. There's many more people using and playing with stuff like this who are kind of figuring it out as they go than there used to be. Yeah. But it, it's not at that point like the... You remember, you know, Safari on the iPhone meant that you could browse the web in your pocket and it looked pretty good. You could read the paper. Yes. Right. And that was like, you could zoom in and out on text. That was exciting. I think we're touching on something pretty important here. And I think we should follow up, by the way, in a future podcast, not the next one, because Mm. I don't want this to just be the AI podcast. In a future podcast where Stan and Jeff get together and it will reverse roles. And let me show you the plan and the budget. That sounds great. I think what's so interesting about what's happening right now is we built something that that people connected with very directly without any intermediaries. And now businesses who most businesses exist and make a lot of money because they are intermediaries mm-hmm. want to know how they get them get get back into that conversation. That is a very good point. AI sort of like Amazon sort of took over the conversation. Correct. AI owns a conversation. Yes. As a as a concept. That is what a business person should actually be anxious about. I think that's right. And I think in a future podcast we should talk about that plan and that budget. All right, good. Uh, you know, we it's good. Everybody should uh, you know, go present to their CEO. All right. So the other thing is we're pretty engaged with AI at a board. We're doing more and more with it. And uh, if you check out, take a look at our Twitter account, send an email to hello at a board.com or look at our, our newsletter archives blog post. You can see I've created an AI board and invited people to it. And there's like 20 people in it. And we're chatting and adding links and kind of trying to understand this whole new world. Tons of great resources in there. Actually, if you want to watch, like if you want to like kick back watch some YouTube videos that'll get you up to speed. It's a great way to do it. I'm starting to, to tag the videos as intros so people can kind of like find them more quickly. It's fun to have awesome. a bunch of people in, in the tool. So anyway, check it out, aboard.com. Come on in, look at our blog. We will, uh, we will help you figure out AI, hopefully. Yes. Uh, because we're a good research tool. We're not just for tracking links. We're for talking about things. We're about organizing and adding structure to data, which happen to be links. And that, that's going to be a big theme of this year. So yes. get ready. And I hope everyone has a healthy, happy, stable 2024. What are your, what are your fitness goals for this year? I, you know, I can't run anymore, Paul. We're not going to end the podcast on my bad knees. That's not what we're going to do. You know, my wife went to the doctor and, you know, we, we've we both been getting more healthy. And he's like, just so you know, I love that you're walking a lot. I don't want you to run. I don't want anyone to run starting in their 40s. It's, it's, well, we're in a city. It's worth pointing out. Yeah. If you have a track that has yeah. cushy, a cushy track or, or grass, it's better than concrete pounding on your knees. I don't do that. I don't do that. I like. I work out pretty consistently. Yeah, you're, it's true. Rich, Rich comes in at ten after working out for about an hour and a half every I, day. I don't. Uh, I like the New Year's resolution thing. I find very depressing. I but. have. I did do a little bit of a flip. I, I've been um, getting up every morning and hitting the rowing machine. It's been helping. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's great. Rowing machines are great. Well, no I want to get. I want to get these pecs just right. You know, as you should. Yeah, as you should. Yeah. Subscribe. Let the world know. Get get on our newsletter and check out Aboard at Aboard.com. Thank you for listening to. The Abort Podcast. Happy New Year again. We love you. Have a great week. Bye.